We're going to have a look at two new extensions from Scape for Genially. They're called Multipass and Multicode and they're basically opposites of each other. So I'm going to show them together. Okay, here's what I do. So Multipass lets things disappear. So if I put in the right answers here, red, blue and so on, the uh, pick disappears. So really it's four different pictures. Uh, the pick has been cut up a little bit here uh, and each one disappears when I get it right. Um, all these extra elements here, they will be invisible if I look at this in proper presentation mode, but in preview mode, they're still visible. Okay, and then multi-code is exactly the opposite. So if I type in one and two, then here my piggy appears again. Uh, well, I meant to be three and four. Okay, and now we've got the pig. Um, here's an example that shows a bit better how you can use it. So for example, here I have to do some math. So if I type this in, only if I type it in, then the gray box will disappear and I can see my uh, page link behind there. So that kind of makes more sense. Um, and it's a nice way if you have, for example, an escape room with several different puzzles and then you get to a page where you need to put all the different puzzles together to then uh, solve uh, everything and c get the final picture or to get um, to all the next pages. Okay, so it's uh, really easy to do. All you need are these three elements here. So the question box, the response box and the code. So I'll show you how it's going to work with these uh, little gnomes here. So let's say we want the first lot to disappear. So I just copy those three elements over. So you need to obviously use this template um, to get these elements. So we've got our question box here, our response box. Um, so remember the response box will later be invisible. So it doesn't really matter where I put it. Uh, the same for the black box here, but it needs to be within the page. So don't put it on the outside. So the response box is important because this is grouped with a text field where I put the answers. So if I want my answer to be one, I just type in one there, which means the norms will disappear if I type in one. And I need to group the text box, the answer box here with the object that I want to uh, disappear. They don't necessarily need to be next to each other. You might just have a really big group basically. So if I want them to appear over there, I could just um, hold down shift while I select both of them and then group them together. Okay, so now if I look in preview mode and I've type type in one, then they disappear. There we go. Uh, if I've got several elements, I can do that as well. So all I need to do is just um, copy and paste the text box and the answer box. So I copy and paste this and th change this one to my next one. Um, so you can see that it has changed it now to solution there and S1 there. And we haven't got any numbers in here. So to make sure that we always have this, the correct answer with the correct question, we need to check the numbers. And we do that by saving the changes and then reloading the presentation. And it will then sort out the numbering automatically. So now if I reload, now I can see that this says Q1, Q2, S1, S2. So I know that S1 will go with Q1 and S2 will go with Q2. So it makes it easy to see where which answer needs to go. If you want to modify the appearance of your text box, you can use the input creator. But careful, there are two templates here. One is for multi-pass, one for multi-code. And I don't think you can swap them. So make sure you use the correct one. So what you can do here is um, here's our preview um, box. So we can, for example, change the size of it, um, change the size of the um, border, and we can even change the appearance of it and the color and so on. And we can also change the name of the font, but the font that you're using needs to be used in some text that is on the same page as where you're using your text box. So for example, in the title um, or in the question, you could have the same uh, name. So 
we need to write down the name of the font. So here are a few examples. So I could put an actor and then it will change it there. So now I've got my box how I want it. I now need to copy this code down here. So I just do control A to copy the whole thing, control C. And now I go back to my page. So let's say I don't want this type of box. Um, instead I go now to insert other and I paste in this really long script. And now it's created this dotted text box. It, it always comes with quite a big field, but I can just make this a bit smaller here so it doesn't cover up other things. I put it there and group it. And hopefully if I go into, um, if I refresh the page, it will show me that this is question one. Okay, so now I've refreshed it, I can see that this has changed to Q1, so it matches with S1. And you can see that the font is a bit different as well now. So there's the, the actor font, even though I haven't got it on the slide, but I think to make sure that it really works well, I need to have it somewhere. Okay, so I've put in one and it's disappeared.